what's up guys, MKBHD here. Welcome to the Smartphone Awards 2019. I'm your host, Marquez Brownlee, and welcome to the show. So 2019 was a really interesting year for smartphones in a lot of ways. I think it's really easy to forget that. And so we've got a ton of smartphones all on this desk in front of me as is tradition, all of which came out during the year 2019. And some of these are gonna win some awards today. So for those of you who are new here, and there's plenty of you, the way this works is we have a bunch of categories and each category will get an overall winner, which has a trophy associated with it. And if there's a worthy one, we'll have a runner up and possibly some honorable mentions. So without any further ado, let's just get right into it. So the first award of the night is for best big phone. Now, almost every phone on this desk is probably bigger than every phone from the desk the way it would have looked five years ago. But this award is for the one that makes the best use of that extra space, that has the best big phone features. And I have a certain favorite in mind. The best big phone for 2019 is gonna go to the Asus ROG Phone 2. So this phone absolutely crushed in the spec department, and that was no surprise, but there are also a ton of other big phone features that I loved about it too. So obviously Snapdragon 855, 12 gigs of RAM, we've all seen that. But then the huge high-res 120 hertz OLED display on the front with no notch. We got dual front-facing speakers. We have a headphone jack in this phone, a dual camera setup on the back. And to top it all off, they tossed in a gigantic 6,000 milliamp hour battery. You know, this is a gaming phone. This is the second generation of the ROG phones that came out this year. And a lot of these features and specs they keep saying are to make the gaming experience better. You know, the dual front facing speakers is to make for better gaming. The high refresh rate, huge OLED display is to make better gaming. The huge battery, better gaming. But all of these things, like I've said in the review, also contribute to making an awesome media experience and just an overall great smartphone. So best overall big phone for sure this year. But I have an honorable mention or a sort of runner up. My runner up for best big phone of the year is one that's perennially been one of the best uses of big phone space for a while now. Not a lot of phones can have a stylus and a 4,000 milliamp hour plus battery. You already know what I'm talking about. That's gonna be the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Huge battery big phone features, big phone design, and a stylus on top of it all. They got rid of the headphone jack, but that's maybe the only complaint about the way they put this thing together. But like I said, best overall big phone for 2019, that award goes to the Asus ROG Phone 2. All right, so the next category is best compact smartphone. And I've sort of mentioned this before, but probably every phone on this desk is bigger than every phone from five years ago. There's some phones on here that came out this year where the screen itself is bigger than the whole phone from previous years. But that hasn't stopped some manufacturers from still focusing on a relatively compact smartphone experience. This is all about the best use of small space. And so my winner for the best compact smartphone for 2019 is this guy. This is the Samsung Galaxy S10e. The S10e kind of flew under the radar for a lot of us this year. It came out alongside the S10 and S10 Plus, but this was the less expensive version of that phone that made almost no sacrifices. The things it did leave out were, in my opinion, the less important third telephoto camera, and then it also moved the fingerprint reader from under the glass to the thumb button, which on a smaller phone is actually much easier to reach, and it was a really, really fast one, so it was convenient. Didn't feel like a loss. Of course, you still have that hole punch cut out in the top right-hand corner. Still an awesome display, still high-end specs, still good battery life. And on top of all that, it kept the headphone jack, which was pretty great for a lot of people. So the Galaxy S10e, that's gonna be my pick for best compact phone of the year. But there is a runner-up as well, and it's a phone that's perennially over and over again one of the ones that makes the least sacrifices between the small version and the big version of the phone. You probably already know what I'm talking about, and that's the iPhone 11 Pro. Really the only difference between the iPhone 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max, the bigger version, is smaller battery, smaller screen. Everything else, the same cameras, the same specs, the same software, all the same features are all the same on the iPhone. This is the legitimate flagship at a smaller size and a smaller price than the bigger phone. So in a world where most phones these days are much bigger than any of their previous brothers were, we got some good ones. But yes, the overall winner for compact smartphone of the year for 2019 is the Samsung Galaxy S10e. All right, the next award category is best smartphone camera. 
And this is probably my favorite category. I'm probably a little biased because I love cameras clearly, but hey, it's my show, so I get to be a bit biased. Uh, there were a bunch of really good and really interesting smartphone cameras that came out this year. We also had our blind smartphone camera test, as is, I guess, tradition now. This one didn't win that, but it is, in my opinion, the best and most versatile overall smartphone camera. And that's gonna go to the iPhone 11 Pro and iPhone 11 Pro Max. And that's for two reasons. Number one, it has multiple focal lengths. It has the ultra-wide camera, it has the standard camera, and the telephoto. And number two, for prowess in both photos and videos on all three cameras. It's kind of funny that we've always had this thought that iPhones are usually either at the best or some of the best smartphone cameras on the market. The competition definitely caught up, but this year the iPhone 11 Pro took some of the biggest steps forward over the previous year. And that's especially in the image processing department. We're talking the new low light mode, we're talking better portrait mode. The computational photography movement has been led in the last two years or so, and the iPhone is right near the front of that now. And especially that versatility. Now, I'm gonna give a runner up, and it's to one that I actually think typically takes to me slightly better photos than the iPhone 11 Pro, but that's in some situations. I'm talking about Google Pixel 4. And it's not gonna be my winner because it doesn't take very good videos, doesn't have the best microphone in the world, and it doesn't have an ultra-wide camera. But the photos that it takes, for the most part, are typically a little bit contrastier, punchier. In my opinion, they feel more confident in a way. But either way, uh, computational photography, again, very strong point and one of the best parts of this phone. Pixel 4 is my runner up for best smartphone camera of the year. And of course I'm gonna give an honorable mention or two here. One to the Huawei Mate 30 Pro. I got this one later in the year and it didn't come to the US and I haven't even reviewed it, but I did like taking photos with it, often very sharp, very detailed photos. You have a quad camera set up on the back here. Uh, maybe leave a comment below if you think this is worth its own review, but I like this a lot. And another shout out, to another honorable mention, and that is the blind smartphone camera test winner from this year, which was Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. So those are your smartphone notables in the camera department, and the winner overall for best camera for 2019 is the iPhone 11 Pro. Okay, so the next up category is battery. Best smartphone battery for 2019. And this one's pretty simple. You just have to have the best battery life or the best combination of battery and fast charging or wireless charging, whatever the solution is, it's gotta give the best power experience. And uh, I didn't have much of a choice for this one. My best battery life for 2019 in any smartphone is gonna go to the Asus ROG Phone 2. This phone, like I said, had a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty much part one to the recipe for any great smartphone battery. It doesn't have wireless charging, and it has decently fast charging, but also if you turn the refresh rate of this 120 hertz OLED down to 90 hertz, you were getting like a day and a half out of this thing, and if you turn it down to 60 hertz, which you probably never would really want to, but if you had to, you could get two days of battery out of this phone easily, confidently, which I cannot say about any other phone here. This had the best battery of any phone that I've used in a long time. Now I have a runner up for this category as well, and that's gonna go to a phone that really takes advantage of having a very low power draw display and just cranking battery, and it's even better than it was last year. I'm talking, of course, about the iPhone 11, successor to the already incredible battery life version, iPhone 10R. This is like the middle child in the iPhone family. Great battery life from an iPhone, and we love to see that. And I'm gonna give an honorable mention as well, too. This isn't the best battery life in any phone, but this is gonna go to the fastest charging phone that I've ever seen, that the world has ever seen, because it's the fastest one we've ever had, and that is the Oppo Reno Ace. Now you might not have heard of this phone, it's not the biggest, baddest flagship from Oppo this year, but they did include what they're calling, what's called Super VOOC 2.0. It's 65 watt fast charging, and that'll bring this battery from zero, dead, to 100% full in about 30 minutes which is incredible. And so there's a couple other smartphones that had 4,500, 5,000 milliamp hour batteries, pretty big ones, but those are your winners, those are your notables in the battery department for this year with the best overall battery going to the Asus ROG Phone 2. All right, so the next category is the design award. And this sort of has shifted over the past couple of years. You know, sometimes the design award is the best build quality in a phone 
or maybe it should just mean like the best overall nicest design with the least compromises. And maybe there's some other ways to think about it, but we're going back to our roots here with the design award. And this is gonna go to what I think is the most important design of this year. And that's this guy. It's the Samsung Galaxy Fold. So this is a fun one. And I think, I have no doubt in my head, this is the most interesting phone to come out during this year. And potentially, we'll look back at it as the most important. So of course, the first Galaxy Fold that never actually shipped to customers ended up breaking. Mine was one of those, but that one never actually sold. The one that actually came out a couple months later, the version two that did actually sell to customers was around $2,000. It was not very popular. It didn't sell a whole ton, but it's of course a first of its kind. I think when you look around at the other phones that came out this year, all of which had their own merits for being great in their own ways, uh, this one was one of the only ones that gave you the possibility of putting a bigger screen in your pocket in the same footprint. And that concept that I'm looking forward to seeing in generation two and generation three of, and looking forward to seeing other companies takes of, was one of the most fascinating parts of looking at smartphones this year. And I think a lot of other people would agree with that, especially when you look at the landscape of phones we have now. So I love the concept, I love the, the risk that they took, and the execution was not bad. I reviewed it, you can go back and watch that, but that's the design award winner. But I do also have a runner up and that's to a phone that also came out this year and didn't necessarily take big risks, but was a nice fresh take on something that I really like to see. And that is the smaller version here of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. So yes, this year we got a Note 10 Plus and a Note 10. This smaller one is the first Note that they've made that you can really reach the entire screen at once. It still has that stylus in it. It still has that sweet aura glow look and the awesome display and the boxy shape and the little hole punch cutout. So Galaxy Note 10 is my runner up in the design department. So two times Samsung there in that category. But the winner overall for design award for 2019 is the Samsung Galaxy Fold. Okay, so next up is the budget phone category. The best budget phone of the year. Now it's funny, we look at smartphones and yes, one of the themes is they've gotten much more expensive over the course of the last year or two. We have $1,000 phones, we have $1,500, $2,000 phones here. But we're actually looking at one of the most competitive categories yet. For this one, I think the top two could easily be interchangeable, but my winner for best budget phone for 2019 is gonna go to this guy right here, the Redmi K20 Pro. So there were a couple of different variants of this phone that came out in different markets, but this one started at 299. And that was one of the biggest things I raved about in the review, and that was sort of a natural feeling, was wow, you get some serious high-end specs, you get a big notchless display, you get a pop-up camera, you still get a headphone jack, and you get a triple camera set up on the back and a pretty decent sized battery for such a low price, for a fraction of the cost of a lot of other phones. So a lot of people that bought this phone this year really liked it, and it was a sort of a phantom successor to the infamous Pocophone from last year. But it's not alone in this category for being really, really good for the price. And I'm gonna hang on to this and pick up my runner-up, almost like they're co-winners because they're really that close and could go either way. But my runner-up for best budget phone of 2019 is Google's Pixel 3a. And this was a $400 phone at launch. And this took a very different approach to what the balance was for features for the price. What the Pixel really focused on was an incredible camera, had the same camera as the Pixel 3, which won our camera award from last year. And also, of course, the stock Google experience had a lot of the same benefits of any other Pixel, quick software updates, pure Google experience. The build quality wasn't necessarily amazing, but you still got the headphone jack, you got a pretty decent battery, and it was a lot of what people were looking for in just a simple, inexpensive phone. These two phones were great this year, and I do have some other honorable mentions, but as far as the best of the best for budget phones, the $300 Redmi K20 Pro and the $400 Pixel 3a were pretty sweet. I'm also gonna bring up uh, the OnePlus 7T. And this was a more expensive phone. This is around the $700 mark, but this was giving you all the same performance and features and speed as those $1,000 phones and was consistently looked at as some of the best bang for the buck in the smartphone world for all of this year. And I'm also gonna give a shout out to the Motorola One Hyper. This is actually a late edition came out just a few weeks ago this year, but this is also a really great phone for 400 bucks. Hasn't gotten a review yet, but that may also be worth reviewing if you guys are into that in the comments section. 
But that's been it. A lot of great competition in the budget area this year, and that sort of stratifies this world of smartphones where now you have stuff going from $300 to $2,300, and you start to see the differences more. But the overall winner for budget phone for 2019 was your Redmi K20 Pro. All right, bust of the year. <sighs> and you hate to give out a negative award at an award show, right? But there's always some pillars that stick out about a year of smartphones that are disappointments and that are phones you shouldn't buy. Um, so we do have a bust of the year for 2019. Now I will preface this by saying the sentiment about a phone is not necessarily just about how good or bad that phone is. It often also takes into account how good that phone could have been, the expectations for what a phone might have been and is capable of being minus reality. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. The bust of the year for 2019 it is the Google Pixel 4. See, the Pixel 4 is not necessarily at all the worst phone you can buy. It's not the worst phone on this desk, but it did have the biggest delta between what people expected of a new Pixel and what you actually got. So with a new Pixel, we of course all know to expect a great camera and the latest and greatest of the Google software experience, and we did get that. But they started right off the bat with a pretty underwhelming design with that forehead. And then we started having problems. We had the 90 hertz issues. We had the battery problems that came with that. We had motion sense not being very good. And then of course there is no ultra wide camera. There is no 4K 60 in video mode. There's not a very good microphone. And just you combine all these things on top of a launch price, which was around $900. It sort of spoke out to the world that it's competing against all these other high end flagships, but it didn't deliver on a lot of the things that we expect from a high end flagship. So the Pixel is a really great camera and it's, it's sort of a, a phone that's gonna go under the radar because of the things that it was a letdown on. But because of that delta between what we expected from a new Pixel and what we got, that's the bust of the year. Now I also do have a runner up for bust of the year and it's just a straight up bad phone. It's a phone you shouldn't buy. It's a phone that almost shouldn't have existed I first saw it at CES where it became very clear that they were just rushing to come out with the first of its kind, the first folding phone. And it finally did come out and it never should have. This is uh, the Royal FlexPi. I kind of feel bad for anyone who actually bought one of these. This phone clearly uh, still looks and feels like a prototype of a folding display that doesn't necessarily have aims to be used by real people. Um, but you could get one. Uh, <laughs> And that's about all I can say about it is you could get one and it wasn't very good. Not a great battery, not a great camera, not a great OS or software experience, not a great design, not a great look or feel in the hand. Even putting it in your pocket like this, this is not a comfortable phone to use or hold with one hand or two open or closed. Nothing good about the Royal Flex Pie. Not even gonna sugarcoat that one. This is my runner up for, it's not like we expected this to be good, but really it's just a bad overall phone. So that's my runner up. But the bust of the year overall for 2019 is the Google Pixel 4. Okay, back to the positive awards. The next up category is the most improved award. And I love a most improved player. This is always a story that's fun when you see something come out last year and you don't necessarily have high hopes for the new one and then boom, big strides forward, big improvements. You love to see that. And so my winner, for most improved award for 2019 is gonna go to this guy, Asus ROG Phone 2. This is, I think, third trophy of the night for Asus, so a little mini round of applause there. The reason this is winning the most improved award, this is the second generation in their gaming phones from the ROG Phone 1. The reason this is most improved is not just because the specs, you know, of course they nailed the specs. You have a huge battery, you have the new 120 hertz OLED, and you have the Snapdragon 855 Plus and all that fun stuff but the reason it's most improved is because they took a legitimate risk with the software experience. Well, some might not say risk. This is a suggestion that I gave to them from the first one, but a lot of people, including me, said that that Zen UI on the first ROG phone was a little bit over the top, and they heard us, and in this ROG phone, you have the choice between that Zen UI or a much cleaner standard version of Android, and they give you that choice out the box, and for the entire life that you use this phone, you can choose between the two. And that was them listening and responding to some real feedback. And that made this phone 
much better for me. I could use this phone daily and love it every single day. The camera's not that great, and maybe the one most improved again and improved the camera, but I really like what they did with the software on the ROG Phone 2. So that is why it's gotten the most improved award and its third piece of hardware of the night. But I do, of course, have a runner-up for this category and one that I think flies under the radar for the improvements that they typically make, and that's gonna go to iPhone 11 Pro. The reason this wins the runner-up for most improved is because of the cameras, the new camera suite, you get the new lenses, the new perspectives, the new improved quality, and the big battery gains from the iPhone XS to the 11, and the 11 Pro Max having the biggest battery gains of them all. So them getting rid of 3D Touch was a big reason for that, but big time battery gains and big time camera gains are important places to have gains, and that's why they have a most improved runner-up. But the, of course, winner for the most improved award for 2019 is that Asus ROG Phone 2. So that brings us to the end, which is the big award of the night, the big trophy over there, this is the MVP. It's a smartphone of the year for 2019. And there's again, now some big pillars standing here. There's important phones, there's important designs, there's improvements being made left and right. We have a big choice to make for smartphone of the year. And this doesn't necessarily go to the best overall smartphone that you should buy right now, but this goes to one that has, I think, the best combination of all its attributes that came out this year in a bunch of different departments. So I'm talking about my winner, which is the OnePlus 7 Pro. This phone is my MVP, my smartphone of the year. By all accounts, the OnePlus 7 Pro was the most liked smartphone of the year. It was followed up later in the year by the 7T and the 7T Pro, which didn't come to the US, but the OnePlus 7 Pro that kicked those all off felt like the best, most complete smartphone of the year. So it had the Snapdragon 855, top of the line, tons of RAM, the specs were great. Then you have a full screen, high res AMOLED display with no notch, thanks to the pop-up selfie camera. The cameras, I think, being the worst part of the phone is a good thing to say because they're not that bad. They're below what you'd find in like a thousand dollar phone, but they're pretty okay. And then a solid battery, very fast charging, a great software experience from OnePlus, and then 90 hertz. 90 hertz is really where this phone started to separate itself because now we're starting to see a divide between smartphones that don't have higher refresh rate and smartphones that do. And it's becoming this thing to follow. How low does it get in price? Where do we see these 90 hertz displays popping up? And I think next year you're gonna start to see a lot of the ones that didn't get on the bandwagon get on that bandwagon. It might be the year of 90 and 120 hertz screens in phones. But this is where that started, and this really proved that that experience does matter. And on top of all that, this was not a $1,000 phone. This one dropped in below 800 bucks, so it was undercutting them in price, proving you don't have to spend 1,000 bucks to get a really great smartphone experience. And in a lot of ways, it was a better smartphone experience than some of the more expensive ones. So this is a phone I used for a good amount of this year. I am now using its sequel, the 7T Pro, the predecessor, or the, the successor. But that is my MVP. That is gonna be the winner for smartphone of the year for 2019. But I do have some runner-ups, and that's the Galaxy Fold. Again, one of the most interesting phones in a really long time, and sort of proving that this is the beginning of a potentially long line of new form factors. And then I have some honorable mentions, of course. I wanna give a shout out again to the Pixel 3a as a potential smartphone of the year. This, for a lot of people, is a great reason to buy a phone that's less than 400 bucks. I hope the Pixel 4a continues and picks up where the 3A left off. And I'll also give a shout out to the iPhone 11 Pro, taking major strides forward in a lot of areas. Now, I'm still really looking forward to the 2020 iPhone, but the gains we made with camera and battery make this, uh, I think, the most worthy of a Pro name in any of the smartphones we have that came out this year. So iPhone 11 Pro is gonna get that honorable mention for MVP. But of course, the winner for most valuable player, most valuable smartphone, is gonna go to the OnePlus 7 Pro. And so that's it. Those are your awards for 2019. I think maybe when we started this and we look back at you know, all the phones that came out this year, it's really easy to see them all as this uniform of all these glass sandwiches, but now it's more clear than ever that there's something for everyone still. There's something whether you're interested in cameras or the best possible big phone or you want a compact phone or you have to have the best battery experience, whatever it is, it's really hard to buy a bad new phone now in 2019. There are even phones on this desk that didn't win awards that are still really good in a lot of ways. So 
I'm happy about the choices we've gotten and I'm pretty happy with the awards. So the tradition lives on if any of the companies that did win awards want their actual physical trophy, I am more than willing to ship that out to them over the holidays. Um, but that's been it for the award show. I'm your host, Marquez Brownlee. This has been my awards for the best smartphones of 2019. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.